guys, happy Wednesday. Jen Lormand here, exercise physiologist, mom of three, and co-owner of Type Your Tinkler. I'm Christina Walsh, physical therapist, mom of two, and co-owner of Type Your Tinkler. And we are talking to you today about something that we haven't talked about before, which is what is the real cost of living with pelvic organ prolapse and pelvic floor dysfunction? Specifically more on the dysfunction end, urinary incontinence will be something that we're talking about. And then pelvic organ prolapse in the use of pessaries and having to get surgeries. Yep, and this is something that many of you are probably either living with or facing the possibility of and maybe would like to think of different options because when we looked up the numbers, we were pretty surprised. Um, yes. Maybe the lowest cost issue is poise pads, <laughs> yeah. which came out to be, according to our calculations, $672 a year. Not that's if you're using about three poise pads a day, which if you're working and you're out and about is a reasonable amount. Yep. Another thing that many women use in situations of pelvic organ prolapse is a pessary. Think of it as like a little scaffolding that you place up the vaginal canal to prop up the organs so that your symptoms decrease. Uh, based on what we could find, it would be about three to $400 for the tools to do the fitting and to order the actual pessary, not including the doctor's fees, which we know add up. And there's a lot of different types of pessaries and so there is a process of finding one that fits you properly that feels comfortable some women find that and others that we've met with and worked with really struggle to find a pessary that fits that's comfortable and doesn't create too much we'll call it friction down yep. there and now for, from a money standpoint not surprisingly the most overwhelming cost that we looked into was the cost of pelvic reconstructive surgery and anything that falls into that category. And we were shocked that we could only find data from 1997, from <laughs> 23 years ago. So, and these numbers are staggering, but they're so old, I can't imagine what they are now. This is the best thing we could find in our search. Yeah, and this is from a study from 1997, and the objective of the study was to estimate the annual direct cost to society of pelvic organ prolapse operations in the US. Now this is back in 97, and the cost to consumers through insurance costs and whatnot was over a billion dollars. <laughs> so this is big. So I mean, obviously we all know if you're going into surgery, just throw your deductible out the window right away. So whatever that is for your family is surely gonna be the cost to you plus whatever, co-insurance and all that complicated stuff. So, but we also know that the most impactful costs of living with these yeah. symptoms have nothing to do with money at all. Yep, mm -hmm. it's all the things that you wish you could be doing, but have to miss out on either because of symptoms or because of fear of symptoms. It's things yeah. like attending the football game with your family, things like getting on the floor and playing with your grandchildren or your or even your kids if you're younger in that demographic. Yeah. Things like doing the things that you love for some of you that might be gardening or, you know, I don't know, maybe you uh, were in a bowling league before or something <laughs> along those lines, but something, things that bring you joy that really create too much pain and discomfort where now you're thinking it's really, it's just not worth it. Or maybe you've told yourself, gosh, this is, this is just what happens or been told, this is what happens when you get older, or this is just gonna be my new normal. Or, or you, maybe, had, you had a couple of kids, what do you expect? Or yeah. I've seen so much worse, this isn't that bad. We hear these stories all the time and it absolutely breaks our hearts because it's invalidating and it's undermining because we know the emotional and physical costs and financial costs of living with these symptoms and it is extremely excruciating when you have to miss out on the relationships that mean the most to you. And that's the biggest cost of all. Right, so the pain with intimacy is one that is, is a tough one. You need to have a conversation with your partner about that. And you know, for someone in my generation, maybe a little bit 
easier than someone who is 10 to 20 years older than me to have with their partner. Yeah. Um, but the other part of it is it's very isolating and it's kind of tricky the way it isolates you because for most women, it's not like you wake up one day with all of these symptoms. They yep. kind of start to creep in and continue to get worse. Yep. And so if you've noticed that you're really adjusting your life around your symptoms and some examples that I'll give is, you know, taking long trips in the car is a really hard thing. Maybe it's because of back pain. Maybe it's because of urinary frequency and urgency or bowel frequency and urgency. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, maybe it's, um, you're just tired of trying to go out and do things because it feels like you have to spend extra effort to prepare. Or maybe you're scared to go somewhere where you don't know where the next bathroom or the nearest bathroom is. And like Jen said, all of a sudden you're questioning whether you should go anymore. Right, and it just kind of creeps up, you know, all of a sudden, you know, sometimes women that we work with, they can't put their finger on kind of how they're feeling about it or when these things started because for survival, we just tend to kind of push these things down in a way and adapt, right? And especially we if you adapt. are a mom, we do everything to take care of everyone else. And it's kind of pre-programmed, yeah. hello, mama bear, but that often involves pushing our own discomforts to the side for a very long time, many, many years, if not decades, and that's common. So don't think, you know, I should have done something else. This is all my fault. It's not your fault. Yeah. You're taking care of your babies. But it's also never too late to find help and to find change. And we are in this for you. We want you to feel that change that we've been able to receive ourselves through all these efforts to find and create this program. And we have bigger dreams. We're reaching you right now because that's what we can do. But we have big, big dreams of changing the standard of care for all women in this country. We feel that we all deserve a rehabilitative program after childbirth. We need it. It's dignifying and it could save, I, I can't imagine how much cost for all of us, Thanks. both financial, emotional, and in, in the whole lifespan journey. So we do have big dreams and we're on that mission, but right now we wanna start with you because that's what we can do now. That's right, so if any of this spoke to you, know that there is hope. Mm -hmm. Know that you really can believe in this. We ask for 30 days in this program to feel a difference yep. or to feel better in your body or to feel like you have control. And what does better mean? I have this conversation all the time with women all the time. It doesn't mean that a magic little fairy <laughs> is gonna fly up and like put <laughs> all of your organs back into place, okay? That's not gonna There's happen. There's no magic dust. What we're talking about is managing symptoms, having tools in your back pocket so that when you do go to that football game where you do carry your grandchildren or have a day where you're at the zoo and maybe you've got a kid on your back or something <laughs> and you've got these things that you can do when you get home to minimize the window of discomfort. Yep and get yourself out of that cycle. That's what better is. Yep, and over time, as you continue to build strength with the exercise portion of the program, the results just keep yep. getting better. They do. You will you need to rely on those recovery tools, as we call them, the symptom management tools that we will also teach you. They're very important for your progress, but you'll need to rely on them a little less as you continue to build strength. That's been my journey. And it, the emotional gift that that has been for me is so empowering and so yes. restoring. And I, it's hard to verbalize. And, and I know I'm one of the lucky ones. I know in the spectrum of symptoms, mine were really not that bad, truly. But I feel incredibly grateful to have those tools and to have a way to feel taken care of without having to outsource medical care or even contemplate anything invasive whatsoever. Um, so I'm very blessed and fortunate and that's why we're here doing this because we want that yeah. for you. And, and on the other end of the spectrum, I was referred for pelvic organ um, support surgery, uh, pelvic organ lift surgery, and that was not something that I was interested in at 38 years old when I was diagnosed. Still not interested yeah. in it. <laughs> and I'm happy to say that using this program has really helped me manage symptoms, living my life, doing the things that I wanna do, and you can have that too. And we desperately want that for you. So if you have questions and you're not comfortable dropping them below, 
please send us a personal message. We've had several women do that. If you're still wondering if you're a good candidate for this women's pelvic recovery program, you can head over to tightenyourtinkler.com. There's a five minute quiz there that you can take and it's going to give you good feedback. Either yes, you're a good fit or no, you're not. It's in comparison to the study participants where we did our research study on this actual protocol and kind of where you fall in terms of spectrum of symptoms. Um, we're opening the doors to the program tomorrow. tomorrow. We're so excited. We want to take our second round of ladies through this digitally. We've made tons of cool upgrades yeah. and we can't wait to show them to you. Um, please join us. We, we welcome you. We want you to be a part of this and we want to help you in your recovery journey. We open the doors for six days only tomorrow through next Tuesday, the day after Martin Luther King Day, and we're here for you. And when you purchase, you do get immediate access to the program where you can start downloading some documents, learning some recovery tools, so that you really can, we call it the Feel Better Now series, so that you really can begin to feel now, and then right about the time where you're getting through the, that module, something magical comes in the mail to you. Get your exercise <laughs> tool. And then you can start your exercise protocol and we've got that drip. So if you're, if you're interested, please send us a message. We would love the opportunity to work with you. We would love to take you on that journey from fear and frustration to hope and confidence. So until next week, we'll see you then.